So listen, I'm excited, all right? We out here today at another cash flow property I just picked up. It's a duplex. Uh, it's actually completely vacant right now, but it's three bed, one bath, up and down. We're gonna be able to rent out both for $1,200 to $1,300, subsidized tenants, $2,600 cash flow. Uh, now, here's the piece. When I looked at the property online, it had been on the market for like 45 days. It had two price decreases, which let me know that they were overpriced, or at least they weren't getting any bites. So I ended up coming in aggressively 10 grand under what they were asking. The seller agreed to the additional price reduction, but under one condition, they would only finish the work that they would already finish. So I would have to put in a furnace. I would have to put in both kitchens and finish the baths. Now for most, they'd be like, B, that's a bad deal. No, it's not. I'd much rather get the lesser price point, right? So I got them down 10 grand. I'm already buying well below market value. We just had our appraisal done. Our after repair is gonna be 200,000. So I'll be all in on this property, even with putting in the kitchens in the baths at about 85, 87,000. And it's gonna be worth 200 grand. Now most would say, B, I pull all the equity out the property. I won't, and here's why. You never let a lender dictate to you how much money they'll give you. You have to be prudent and underwrite your own deals to where you hedge against where the market is going. See, I don't wanna pull all the equity out of the property knowing that we're moving into a recession and that the market is starting to slow down because I don't wanna be in a situation where I'm either upside down on my mortgage or I also don't wanna be in a situation where I pulled so much equity out that it drove my debt service up, my monthly expenditure to where the property really don't cash flow. The whole purpose of buying cash flow is to get cash flow. So let me show y'all what I'm talking about. So as you see right here, see this is already stubbed up for plumbing, right? So you'll run your bank of cabinets here, put your sink in, you know, all the rest of it. Over there, we'll put our electric stove and call it a day, okay? So, and I actually got a gas line ran here as well if we want to do gas. Then coming in here into the bath, you know what I mean? You got a toilet, sink, shower, diverter. The diverter is actually in. We just got to put the, the, the knobs on and the shower head. So, I mean, it's not as complex as it sounds. It sounds scary that you got to put the kitchen and the baths in, but everything is already there, right? We just got to buy the material, put it in. So, same deal up here. Kitchen upstairs, right? Remember I told you it's a two-family flat. It's kitchen up here. Same deal. Finish dropping in the rest of the bathroom. Nice back room back here as well. I mean, somebody is really gonna enjoy this space. Like, really enjoy it. So, I know you see what I'm doing. You don't have to do what I do, right? You gotta figure out what's the goal, what makes sense for you. When you run out and start trying to copycat everybody's strategy, you're just gonna get spread too thin. Now, I encourage people, we make a lot of money doing this. So absolutely, I, I would encourage you to do what I do. But at the same time, what if your goals are, you want you know, an extra $100,000, $200,000 in a year, then you need to actively go out and produce that cash flow probably won't be the best model for you. So just think with the end in mind, understand what you want, and there's a strategy for every single thing that you wanna accomplish. So for more content like this, click and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can learn more.